hello all welcome to tech capture so in this video we are going to see what are the different data processing services in google cloud and how we can perform a etl operation using different data processing services in a google cloud so let me tell you one thing before if you are preparing for google cloud certified data engineer certification this video will set a very strong foundation for your exam and it will help you a lot so let me go to the next slide and first tell you how the data processing works in a google cloud so here a first step will be a data ingestion so whenever you want to process a data in a google cloud or any cloud the first step you have to get your data into the cloud so what is the entry point here so there are different services where you can put your data into the google cloud so the typical ones suppose if it is a real time or a streaming data it can be your cloud pops up so your data can be ingested into the pops up and then we can process data with the different other services to stream your data or it can also be used for asynchronous messaging so the pops up can communicate asynchronously with a minimal latency with uh, loosely coupled applications if you have object kind of data like your audio file media file your uh, csv files your json file or any kind of object that you want to process in google cloud first you have to put that files or that media data or storage data into the google cloud storage so we have a google cloud storage for storing this raw data we can use it for storing our raw data and also there can be application which are producing data which can be transformed into the different format and then we have to load into the data warehouse or any other component like a looker or use for processing so in that case uh, i just take example of app engine which will create a data internally now once we have the data so suppose we have huge amount of data now in our storage bucket or there are messages in a cloud pops up and now we want to process that data then what are the op options for processing that data in a google cloud so first we have google data flow then we have cloud data fusion and then we have cloud data proc now these three different services have different significance here so cloud data flow is built on apache beam framework so beam is nothing but uh, stand for like batch and stream processing so this is very unique service when it comes to a stream processing in gcp so we'll just concentrate along with video on exam questions also so whenever in exam you are getting questions okay you want a real time data processing or you want a streaming data analysis then always use a combination of cloud pops up and cloud data flow so we will get a multiple combination in your options so you have to choose a combination of cloud pops up and a google data flow because it is used for streaming processing then a cloud a data fusion so data fusion it's a tool where no coding is required so it is called as a no code tool so you can use this service without any kind of coding you just have to drag and drop the services okay so in exam there will be definitely questions that there is an organization where they want to process the data but they don't want to put a coding overhead on their employee then which data processing service can be used so if there is anything mentioned in a question that they don't want any kind of coding or no code solution then go for a cloud data fusion because it doesn't require any kind of coding it's just a ui tool where you can drag and drop your source and destination and create the mapping third is a cloud data prop so data prop is mostly for your big data and hadoop jobs so anywhere it is mentioned that your current workload has to be migrated to your uh, google cloud or the current hadoop and big data pipeline has to be migrated on uh, google cloud then always go for a cloud data proc so this is mostly for hadoop apache spark and big data services in a uh, google cloud so hope you understood the difference between these three so if it is streaming processing go for google data flow if it is no code solution go for cloud data fusion and if it is for a big data and hadoop jobs go for cloud a data proc okay now these are two different stages of pipeline now first we ingested data then we process the data so this data processing can be a transformation of your data now just take an example user is just filling the google form and we are storing that google form into the cloud storage bucket so we have different option in google cloud form like 
put your name put your surname put your address put your city put your country like five column but while loading into the data we want everything as a single column like name it can be full name country city and etc so that can be concatenated using the data processing so that called as a transformation so that operation will come under this data processing stage or just take another example user is putting the credit card number in the google form i'm just giving an example here so and we don't want that complete card number to be visible in your uh, tables whenever you are loading the data then you can perform operation to mask the data that can be again done in your data processing pipeline now there will be a third stage again once your data is transformed you have to store that data okay so where you will store the data for large data storage you have option google bigquery so it is nothing but a google serverless data warehouse service then you have option google bigtable which is a nosql database you can store your large amount of time series data i would say or uh, iot device data you can say so that can be stored in a google bigtable then we can also use a google cloud storage so suppose you have large amount of audio file video file you just applied some data processing or suppose you want to reduce the size of your video files and again you have to store back into the cloud storage so this storage again can be your destination and this can be vice versa also so first your data can be pulled from cloud bigquery and then transform and then again loaded back into the bigquery or your data can be extracted from bigquery it exported and then stored into the gcs bucket so the source and destination can be vary but this is actual flow whenever you are creating a data processing solution in a google cloud now when to use a google big table and when to use a google big query so when you have relational data then you can use a google big query and if your main need is to data use for analytics purpose you have to create one bi application or you have to create some dashboards and report then you should go for google big query it has a lot of inbuilt functionality for analytics bi and machine learning as well and cloud big table is mostly for your time series data where there will be like millions of operation per second millions of writes and reads per second that can be used using the big table for a very huge operations okay and cloud storage as i said it's object storage so any kind of object data you can store on a google cloud storage now once this data is available in a data warehouse can be a big query or your relational databases like cloud sequer or a cloud spanner so it can be anything your data is coming in cloud storage in a csv format you are applying some transformation and then you are loading your data into the cloud sequer or a cloud spanner a relational database so your data storage can be destination data storage can be anything here out of this so now once your data is available in the tables then the flow will come as a data analytics ml and ai so it is machine learning and artificial intelligence once your data is available in support uh, data warehouse and bigquery then you have to perform some analysis on that data and you have to take the business decision or you have to forecast your business for next year or next five years then you can use a different dashboarding services or reporting services or a bi tools like looker so we have looker here we have uh, machine learning models in google cloud like vertex ai or we can use atoml services like vision apis text to speech or speech to text or we can again use a bigquery ml or bigquery analysis services okay then we have google data studio we can use a different uh, features of google data studio to build a reports and dashboard based on your bigquery data or google sheet data okay now this is a complete flow but how we can orchestrate this all solution so we need a cloud composer so cloud composer is just used to orchestrate all these some uh, services so suppose once a file is available in the storage bucket then i have to start a data processing once data processing is completed i have to create a report so each these dependencies all these tasks are orchestrated using a cloud composer and this cloud composer used along with all other services and this will be your complete flow for your data ingestion data processing data storage and analytics so hope you understood all these services overview at least when to go for which services now i'll explain all these services in detail with a hands-on demo in our next few videos so stay tuned on this playlist we'll see you in the next video.